really
Nice job. Thank you. Did you paint all the time, eh? Mm, pardon? You paint all the time, eh? Well, most days. Most days. That's nice, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you don't want to be having a cloth that's flailing around and causing problems to land where you don't want them. Watch that. Probably couldn't hear a thing there. The swearing and stuff, so maybe no harm. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Sound missing for ages.
or just a mumble. <laughs> right, so that's where that was actually dark. And I lifted it off because I wet the paper and lifted it off by mistake. So I wanted that to be dark again. Sometimes that doesn't work straight away, so I just need to have patience and leave it and bring the dark in later on again so I can focus on somewhere else. Like maybe with that brush, I could establish again the edge of the harbour wall up here with a bit more clarity. Because it's really quite dark, that wall, that edge. And I think it's quite a feature of this harbour. And all those lovely birds landing on it there now, but I'm not going to get involved in them just now. Instead, I want to find the darks behind here that might allow me to pick out the structure of the boat in front. A little bit of bottle green seems to help too. And I've got some green too in the foreground water. It's green that's got some cerulean in it, I think. Maybe. Better watch so they don't splash the cars here. And it's quite calm, despite being so wet earlier, it's actually quite a calm day, so that's good. Because the reflections will enhance the structure of the boats for me and give me a bit more of a clue. As long as they don't just suddenly take off now, because I'm just about getting them. I'm trying to create this downward sweep of the shadow cast onto the water. By lifting out in between those shapes. We still have the sand colour underneath there, but sure it's alright. I didn't mean that to be there, but it's okay. And then this is a more cerulean bluish shadow on the water. And it still has those um, masts vertically dropping down the cast shadow of the mast. A reflection, I should say, of the masts hanging down there. So what's happening here then is that there's a lovely light coming up in between those two boats there. <coughs> That's still reflection. And then here, I'm going to just use the oil pastels because I'm driven to trying to get dark enough on this paper with the Trying to get dark enough on this paper with the acrylic for some reason it's just well not for some reason it's lifting off because the paper is too wet just now and i want to get the dark i want to establish the dark brown and blue with that boat so i'm just literally going to use the brown and blue again it's the brown oil pastel this time mixed with the blue that blue is there too. It needs to be black really for God's sake. I think it just needs to be black that bit. Okay so flattening as best I can and even bringing some of the black down into the shadow. So let's see. Do you know it's not black, it's green, is it? I don't know, it's a dark green, I guess. Looks black there. Anyway, it's doing the job. And in there I might still print some acrylic, so I'm leaving it blank. I don't want there to be oil passes underneath the acrylic where possible. And then there's more cerulean blue, so I'm using the different colour cerulean blue for that spot there. Hmm. Got white and green, so I could maybe do something with the water here, because I'm not very happy with the brown showing through. The tide came in and filled over the brown, so if I use that with the white over it, that's not white. There's a reflection there. Okay, I'm getting 
getting there, getting there slowly but surely. Hmm. So here, right, I'm going to use a slightly lighter color. And there is the color of the cabin there. You maybe notice the struggle, like this is a real struggle. It's, it's kind of fun to stay with us, stay with us, stay with us, best you can. Just keep open to what might let itself be seen. And try not to trip yourself up on your microphone lead. So down there now there needs to be a clarity at the edge. So I think it's white again here for this this there's a reflection here hmm. and it goes oh, goes around kind of but the shiniest bit is in the middle you don't want to overdo the arcs and the and the, the brightness you don't want to overdo the brightness but here and there it's appropriate is this I never thought of the collage option actually might have come in handy at some point here to to offer a to offer a bit of solace um, okay so maybe the boy the orange boy might be helpful and I've got the chalk pastels Yeah, as I look at it from a distance, it's not quite enough, you see, not quite enough information. So I don't know if starting with the oil pastel is a step too early. Let's just see. I mean, the chalk pastel, that one might be the final moves for me, you know, doing the chalk pastels. But maybe it'll help me. Some lovely colours in here. Thanks, Claire. Lovely colours that I can use to clarify bits and pieces. Thank you. Well, I do. It was half an hour. I was half an hour in the car, though. It was hailstoning for a while. But yeah, it's nice now. Yeah, there needs to be quite a bit more action here. It's all quite convoluted there. What made me choose this? Why did you let me choose this angle, guys? Right, I think it's the oil pastels that'll help me here now, I reckon. Grey oil pastel. There. And I keep having to half close my eyes. I want to come back in with the black. That's green. Where's the black oil pastel? Pretty sure there is black here. That's black, okay. Right, so I'm going to use the black oil pastel now to really find some structure in here and distinguish parts from each other. dominant thing isn't it the oil pastel <laughs> a rusty color there maybe something rusty colored here might not be a bad time to introduce some collage. Yeah, I think it might work there. Here. 
Don't really want the green. I don't think I need that anywhere. But I do need a bit of a cabin. What will I do for the cabin? It's going to help to clarify, but I don't want to go over the top of all this black. I think if I hit a crane, here we go now, a black crane might hopefully allow me to, with my left hand, what about that? I could do the cabin windows and my eyes half closed. I'm noticing that there is, it's not all luminous white cabin there. That actually, you know, it's quite muted in places. Uh, here as well, the, the crane, I think, helps to bring in that element of something, you know, all the bits and bobs that are there. I think I could maybe do with a straight edge, like a ruler or something. Um, I've got some more collage paper here too. Maybe bring the collage paper out. Just in case I'll start to use that. Hmm. There's a possibility of bringing a touch of that collage. Mm, no. Actually, what I went, wanted was just a straight edge to do the masts. So I've got a gardening magazine here. So I've got a white chalk. No, it's white um, crane. And it's kind of light enough that it'll do this. It'll give me the quality of those, of the shine on those masts without have been too dominant. colours that might represent the water. There's one here. Just to help that to amalgamate collage bit to meet the rest of it. And then there's the line at the bottom of that boat. And there's a darker line below it. And you know, there's a life boy there, which is kind of a gift, isn't it? To make a boat feel like a boat. And I've got the word free here. I think I'm going to call one of the boats free. I'm going to call that boat free. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but sure, I found it there, maybe I'll use it. got here now. So these lines are handy to describe the structure of the boat too as it's coming towards us. So notice, noticing those lines is helpful. And then losing and finding them again in places. I think does kind of help with the distressed feel of the whole area. You know, to find and lose a texture. That's the water, the reflection. And then back here there's a colour that's not similar to that. It's maybe needing to be a bit darker than that. On the top of the you know, the, where the wall, the harbour wall meets the flat surface. It comes down there and it gets a lot brighter as it comes down here. Maybe more colour. Yes, yeah, so I feel like something here needs to be addressed now.
often find that it really helps for these lines to be straight. It's one of the characteristics of the harbour, really, isn't it? That you've got straight edges. And some of those brights are really bright now. There's a really bright bit right here that I quite like. And then over here, the cabin is suddenly really shining out in the light on the side that is facing the sun, of course. The evening sun. So you see, evening time is often a lot better to paint in than like late evening or early morning. Things can feel a lot more exciting, I think. Now, we need a grey to surround the dark. Because it's not white, that cabin is not white. But before surrounding the dark, I'm going to make the dark a little bit more dominant. I have closed. I think those cabin more, those uh, cabin windows are a touch darker than I've got them. As is the harbour wall coming down to meet the top of that white cabin. It's not black; it's brown. I'm painting that on either side of that guy rope or mast, whatever it is. That needs to be not brown but black, I reckon. There, where the boat stops and the water begins. And then below it, it's kind of more of a blue than a, a bit more blue than I've got it, I reckon. Reflection. And then inside these windows, too, are quite dark. I wish I had another bit of paper to stick on there. Stick on this for the boy. And it'll dry clear that glue. Now I want to put some paper on there, and I think I will. Of course, I don't have any masking tape or anything. Maybe just sticking on the other side of the boat with the glue. With the glue. Might be enough. Maybe. use the ink and the stick maybe now to define a little bit more clearly again. So I'm going to use the chalk pastel. This is the other colour. Sorry, tweakers have been doing that all along. I think I'm going to stop fairly soon. It feels like I've got enough sense that we know that at least it's boats. But I do have um, the Indian ink and the dipper here. Do you know what I might do actually? Let's put that into the this. I'm going to put the Indian ink into this. Although this is blue, let's see how this is. A nice blue ink in this. And maybe it might be a, a better addition than black, because there's quite a lot of black in this painting now. Gosh, I keep knocking you. Okay. So the blue little ink, it's acrylic ink from Little. I think it's causing there to be. Um, something different coming in. It needs to be quite dark there though, so I will use the black Indian ink straight from the bottle here. Get the underside of that. Well, you know I'm going to need to lift off that tape and stick it onto a different bit of paper and collage it on properly with this, you know, but it's worth it I think because it did need to be 
I wasn't, the composition needed to be different from the way it was actually. I felt I needed more space. Having started it, I wanted to extend more that way. Which, that's the story of my life. The whole time wanting to extend beyond the page. In fact, I want to do it on the left too with the other boat. And the, the collage paper I prepared is in the front of the car and I'm not going to go into the front of the car now because I've got plenty here to choose from. So I should be able to find something without resorting to the... Oh yeah, look. I reckon that's Amoretti. Amoretti biscuit paper, that boat. very wet container with glue in it. There's still enough glue that it'll stick that because it's nice light paper. Not happy with that drip. Get some clean rag, cleanish. Not happy with that drip there. This painting might need to stay on this board. I like this pattern but it needs to be there really. And that's maybe somewhere here. In fact I think it could be there. To help explain where the bottom of the boat meets the water. And there's even another boat back there, but I'm kind of getting away with it, aren't I? I think I might stop there because it reads to me like boats. And the central one does have the most, um, this is the most clarity, but you know, the central one that I was interested in first seems to have the, um, still the center of focus. That could do with the clarity at the top though. And what do I want to put there now? Not a line of ink, no. I'm going to use a line of um, oil pastel. Either brown or black. So I'm starting with brown. I think the brown might be enough. So do you see what I'm doing here now? I'm extending beyond onto the board. onto the Actually onto the tape that's on the board. Which might not be a bad thing. If I... I could make that tape, archive quality tape, by putting some um, varnish seal over it. Because otherwise I'm going to need to draw this onto the same section onto another board and stick it on or something. At the moment it's not important to me the longevity of this. It's more important to me to explain it. That's where my passion lies here now. And I suppose, you know, I can get Jim to take a photo of it as it is if, it's, if I want to remember it. Now down there, it's white, where the cabin meets the thing. So the, um, the way to make this work for you, if you've got an attitude like mine, is to get a massive board and start on massive paper maybe. It's been a long time now, you'd think I might have tried that myself, so that I'm never going to go over the edge. Um, so I'll try that the next time maybe. It was, it was surprisingly calm when I came here today. I expected it to be a lot more blustery. So I was pleasantly surprised but then of course the hailstone started. Okay, the ink. Hmm, black ink. black ink and there's also the watered down sepia ink which is exciting too but the black ink I want first to continue this this line here over the Amoretti biscuit wrapper so that reads as the same boat maybe even some of the ink could define the oh for goodness sake it's fierce black isn't it I was going to say they could define the um, um, inside of the cabin how are we? Hi, I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing a video here. All right, I'll stay here away. It's okay. You can you can be here, but you, I'm not talking to myself in case you're thinking, what who's she talking to? I'm actually talking to them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so difficult and such 
change in skywise, isn't it? Well, there was a lot of hailstone earlier. That was the main difficulty. I don't mind the sky changing really, because it's far away enough. It's it's mostly just the the boats I'm interested in here. Hmm. Thank you. No, I think I'll maybe use the edge of that to get a bit a bit of a bit more. I think grey might be the job there. I get a bit more of these um, lines, in fact, grey inside that cabin. I'll be going overboard now because it, it was all right, wasn't it? Just maybe a couple of more of these straight lines. I have a kind of a lost and found line as well, so I'm even using just charcoal, which is barely going to cover parts of this and tear it into bits. And interested in the edge of that shadow. I don't see really how I can make any improvements now. I think I'm just going to be... Yeah, I don't want to start diluting things. The sky is a glorious shade, isn't it? There can be a touch of that in that sky now. Soft pastel doesn't really work on this paper. I'm just crushing it in. All right, I think I'll stop there. Hopefully, video is still rolling, and hopefully, you've been able to see what I've been doing most of the time. Um, 55 minutes, and that's only that's the second one, like. So it's been a long time, but I still feel the vigor of it. In the, in the same way as at Sea Cliff, I still feel. Ex excited by the scene, interested and you know, it's it's been good. 
I hadn't felt stuck. I felt desperate. <laughs> they say when you're desperate, you discover. When you're curious, you can be creative. When you're desperate, you discover. And I guess embarking on any painting, my memory of most of my paintings really is that there's a desperate desperation to really uncover what's really there for me and then um, to keep the faith. <laughs> so I think we got there in the end. At least it looks okay on there. Um, and I feel okay about it. I feel like I've given it my best shot. Okay, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow, maybe? You see. Take care. Bye. Um, and if I'll bring you a bit closer. Um, and also to say, in case this goes public, this is this is Anya Devine. Anya Devine here. I'm a painter and art teacher. I have a studio down the road here in Kakenzie. So I'll just bring this a bit closer for you to see um, the chaos that's in there. Um, you can see free is the name of that boat in the front because I found the word free. Okay. And that's the sky. You see, it's quite chaotic, but I think from a distance it works. Simply through mostly the, the reflections being vertical down there, I think we've got a feeling of steady substance in the boats. Okay, take care. Nearly an hour. Bye.